but not least is Jonathan Scoville. He's a neurosurgery resident um, that will be presenting on Duane syndrome. Um, so we've already kind of had a preface to that with Dr. Birds, and so we'll go a little bit further into that. Um, and please uh, just be aware that next week uh, we have our uveitis presentation um, by Dr. Vitaly. Yeah, so this actually works out. This is a great segue into, uh, yeah. into a related uh, topic. So we're going to kind of go on the other end of the spectrum from uh, a patient who presented with a sixth nerve palsy that had uh, DIPG to um, the, the other end, which I think is kind of interesting that we're going to have these back to back. And, oh, yeah, that's right. Let's get out of here. Okay. Okay, so. Um, uh, interestingly, another six-year-old female who presented uh, to Dr. Katz's clinic last Monday, she had uh, no significant past medical history, but her mother was concerned. She was actually concerned because she thought uh, her right eye turned in and was uh, kind of a lazy eye and that she could do it at will, but then sometimes it would just do it on its own. Um, and then the patient herself complained of some double vision with uh, leftward gaze. Uh, on examination, her ocular examination was uh, unremarkable. Visual acuity was 20-20 in both eyes. Um, the only thing that was uh, um, abnormal was that in her left eye, she was unable to adduct or abduct, and then uh, she had narrowing of the palpebral fissure with adduction, and um, but no upshoot or downshoot, and then some um, contraction, I guess, of the globe, uh, and her. Her up gaze and down gaze were normal. And then, as I said before, uh, she did have some diplopia with leftward gaze. So here's some images of uh, the patient. Um, you can see, is this, oops, goes back here. Sorry. Uh, you can see uh, on the far left, that's uh, her leftward gaze, and that left eye uh, is unable to abduct um, really at all. So um, when thinking of, when you see a patient with a, with a um, uh, horizontal gaze um, abnormality, um, especially in the pediatric po population, I would uh, think that the differential diagnosis would include Duane syndrome. Uh, you could also think of a cranial nerve 6 palsy, which the case of the other patient had. And that's commonly seen in hydrocephalus, which is common in the pediatric population uh, due to the um, unbraced nature of the sixth nerve as it tra transverses through the uh, cavernous sinus, um, the pressure affects that uh, um, significantly. Um, and then also other um, neurosurgical pathologies like a DIPG or um, uh, other tumors. Um, you can think of Brown syndrome as well, however, that's more seen in uh, vertical gaze. And then uh, they also have a simple esotropia or exotropia of, of uh, infancy. Um, so this, this patient uh, did, ha did indeed have Duane syndrome, um, and we'll talk about some of the, Duane syndrome is a clinical diagnosis, and we'll talk about some of the, um, uh, some of the uh, characteristics in a, in a minute, but it's named for Alexander Duane, who is an American ophthalmologist um, who practiced in the early 1900s on the East Coast and uh, studied um, extraocular movements of the eye and actually wrote a book on it in which uh, Duane's retraction syndrome, as it was originally called, um, was named for. It's a congenital limitation of abduction or adduction of the eyes due to maldevelopment mal mal of the motor nucleus or motor fibers of the sixth nerve. And in um, many cases, it's an absence of the motor nucleus of the sixth nerve. And it can be uh, unilateral or bilateral. Um, it's also characterized by co-contraction of the medial rectus and lateral rectus muscles. Um, as the third nerve will um, innervate the uh, inferior portion of the lateral rectus muscle. And so when they adduct their eye, will actually pull both muscles and contract the globe and then narrow that palpebral fissure as well. Um, and then amblyopia is present in about 10 cases of, of Duane syndrome. So the minority, but it should be noted that 
they have a uh, higher than normal percentage of or risk of uh, developing amblyopia and should be followed. So here's a pathology slide from a patient uh, that had Wayne syndrome, and you can see all the cranial nerves are marked out, uh, but sixth is the sixth cranial nerve uh, is completely absent. Um, yeah. So it's broken down into to three types, and although the pathophysiology is the same for all three types, it's more of a, a clinical um, distinction. So type one is the most common type. It's, uh, uh, it is characterized by abduction abnormalities, and then, um, which is absent or limited, and then can have normal to limited abduction, but more classically abduction of one or both eyes. Um, can, be, can have up, up shooting and down shooting of the affected globe on adduction, and then esotropia in primary gaze is common, but not always present. Uh, type 2 is the least common. It's um, characterized by adduction of the affected globe with normal to limited abduction as well. Um, can be bilateral, unilateral again, um, with up shooting, down shooting of the affected globe on adduction and exotropia in primary gaze. And then type 3 is the, the second most common type. Um, and it's abduction or adduction of one or both eyes. Up shoots and down shoots are again seen, and, but these are more common in, in type 3 than the other types. And then you can have esotropia or exotropia in primary gaze. Uh, so the pathophysiology, most cases are sporadic. Uh, so uh, there's mutation of, of a gene that is unknown as yet that causes um, uh, disinnervation of the sixth nerve um, on one or both sides. Um, however, it has been found to be associated with this uh, DURS2 locus on chromosome 2, um, and they are more commonly seen in type 1 or 3. It is also associated with Okahiro syndrome, which is also called Duane radial ray syndrome, which is uh, characterized by Duane syndrome and the dis dysplasia of the radial bone, artery, and thumb. So you have the thenar eminence is, um, is uh, dysplastic, and then uh, it's associated with this mutation of SALL4, which is a zinc finger transcription factor. It's also associated with golden heart syndrome, which is uh, uh, also called ocular acoustic vertebral syndrome, characterized by craniofacial ocular cardiac vertebral and central nervous defects. Uh, so it's consistent with maldevelopment of the first and second branchial arches, which is usually associated with uh, cranial nerve five and seven, however, uh, that great slide that was presented showed that how seven kind of loops around sixth, and so you can have uh, disinnervation syndrome of the sixth nerve as well. Uh, so on the left, this is a patient with uh, Okahiro syndrome. You can see the dysplastic DNR evidence on the left, and then also uh, the inability to adduct or abduct the right eye in, uh, on a rightward gaze in the patient. And then uh, on the left is a patient with a golden heart syndrome, and uh, you can see the dysplastic uh, of the right side of her, of her face with the, the, uh, the ear and, and jaw being um, misformed. And this is actually a milder case of golden, golden heart syndrome. Uh, so the treatment, um, uh, when, once uh, the clinical diagnosis of Duane syndrome is made, and uh, um, most cases can be managed with observation, um, especially if they have minimal ESO or exotropia. Um, and um, you can, if they do have amblyopia, you can occlude um, the better seen eye to, to try and um, prevent um, loss of vision in, in, in the uh, affected eye. And then you can also, for extreme forms of esotropia or exotropia, prisms or corrective surgery can be um, used uh, to correct. Uh, to improve compensatory head posture, which can cause pain um, in uh, cervicalgia, and to improve alignment in primary position, or to improve the upshoot or downshoots. Um, so in conclusion, um, this is a clinical diagnosis. It should not be confused with a cranial nerve 6 palsy. Uh, if there are other worsening symptoms or signs of ischemia or um, you know, progressive symptoms, then obviously uh, 
more serious pathology should be expected, ex uh, and uh, further um, uh, evaluation should be done to, to provide a good diagnosis. Uh, most patients that will have a good alignment and can be managed expectantly. And uh, like I said about amblyopia, they have a higher risk for this, and so should be should be monitored throughout childhood. And surgery can be used in extreme cases. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Dr. Katz and uh, the neuro-ophthalmology department for uh, allowing me to follow them around and teach me how to use a slip lamp this month. So thank you very much.